everybody's looking great tonight. Thanks for coming. Hello. Hello to you. Hello, sir. Yellow shirt. That's nice. I like the yellow shirt. Hello, friends over here. Oh, I'll say hi to them later. Hello over there. Everybody coming in. Hey, as you're coming in, come to the front. Come to the front, everybody. We're going to have some fun together right here in the front, so don't be shy. Right here, this is the influencer right here. She seems really cool. If you want to be cool, follow her lead. Welcome to Ground Zero, everybody. Hey, if you're out there, can, I, can you make some noise for me? Are you out there? I think we can do a little bit better than that. Are you out there tonight? Ah! Oh my gosh. Yes, as you're coming in, please come to the front and hang out with us. Hey, uh, if you're in sixth grade, scream really loud. If you're in seventh grade, scream really loud. How about eighth grade, everybody? Oh, if you're online, scream really loud. I'm sure they did, I'm sure they did. Hey everybody, welcome to Ground Zero. My name is Josh, this is Madison, and we are going to do some singing together before we do anything else. So if you're sitting, please stand up. Please stand up, everybody. Come to the front. We're going to sing these songs together to worship Jesus and thank him for who he is and what he's doing in our lives. So would you sing with me? Let's do this together. Come on. Let's get those hands in the air like this. Come on. Eyes wide, I'm set on you. Yeah. You made a road in the wild. Standing on ancient truth I'm pressing on With my back to the past
Jesus, would you be here with us as we learn more about who you are and grow closer to you, Jesus. We love you so much. And we pray all of this in your name, amen. Hey, Grounder, you can go ahead and take a seat. And while you're doing that, please welcome the guy who was here last week, John Zeldin Rose. Last week, I can't believe that. Man, my goodness. Thank you, Ground Zero. Good to be with you all. Welcome to Ground Zero Online. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. You're joining us. Uh, we're going to have a ton of fun tonight. And here's what I need you to know on the front end. My name is John. So if you are brand new and you're like, who is this guy yelling at me? What is he doing up there? I'm your student pastor. That means I'm the guy who gets to hang out with you every week. I get to pray with you. If you got questions, come ask me. I like to have fun every week. Uh, does anyone here like to have fun? A couple people, okay, good, because we need to have some fun right now with a stage game, and here's what I need. I need the best athletes in the room, the absolute best athletes in the entire room, right there. You are sure you're an athlete. Come on up. And, uh, this guy's really confident, and last but not least, backwards hat. Backwards hat, guys. There he is. Oh, sorry, I already chose. <laughs> you're like, please do. All right. Nice. Here we go. Okay, these guys are ready. Are you guys all sixth graders? That's what I'm talking about, all sixth graders. Yeah, clear your pockets out. You're not going to want anything holding you back. Hey, back, back row. 
backish row. If you're in the back a little bit, here's what I need you to do. Can you put your arms up like you're on a roller coaster? Okay, hold them up for a little while. I'm gonna tell only if you're in the far back, the very back, okay? That looks good. Whoever's, yeah, back there, perfect. Okay, here's the name of the game. It's called Marshmallow Home Run Derby, all right? Marshmallow Home Run Derby. Here's how it's gonna work. My dude Dustin right there. Everyone say, what's up, Dustin? He's, he's an ace pitcher. Gold Olympic invite, probably. Uh, he's gonna pitch to these guys here. We're gonna go down the line. You should get like 10-ish pitches, all right? And you're gonna take the bat, hit the marshmallow as far as you can. If you hit it over their arms, their arms are the fence. If you hit it over their arms, counts as a home run, you're gonna get a point, all right? And the person with the most points at the end gets a million dollars. No, not quite, almost. A great prize though. Here's what I need to know first. So I wanna know your name. I wanna know your grade. And then in honor of baseball, every baseball player has a walk-up song, all right? When they, when they go to walk up, they're like, the song plays, they, they walk up. So I need to know your walk-up song. Any song, any song you want online, let me know what your walk-up song would be. If you had a walk-up song, what would it be? Start over there, all right, I'm coming to the end. Ladies first, sorry, Vayne, you're out, okay. Give him, give me your name. It's Peyton, I already know it, okay, it's Peyton. Everyone say, what's up, Peyton? What's up, Peyton? Peyton, what grade are you in? She's a sixth grader, are the sixth graders here tonight? They're here, what's up? Way to show up, sixth graders. And then Peyton, what would your walk-up song be? Any song? She said, Barney, Barney Peyton, great. That is a great walk-up song. Think how sweet that would be for the, uh, yes, I love it. Barney, great thinking. Uh, no, no, name first. Your name. Jake, we got Jake up here. Everyone say, what's up, Jake? Ah, oh, Jake Sue's down there. All right, what's up, Jake Sue's? Uh, Jake, what grade are you? He's a seventh grader. Seventh graders, you guys here? They're here. All right, you're here. And Jake's walk-up theme song would be Dora's theme song. Dora the Explorer. We're going full Dora the Explorer in here, all right? You're never too cool for Dora the Explorer. And then last but not least, who we got? We got Micah. Everyone say, what's up, Micah? Micah, what grade are you? He's a sixth grader. Sixth graders, you guys are up. Eighth graders, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. You're, okay. Micah, what's your walk-up song? I don't know. Is that a song or you don't know? You don't know. Um, I love you. You love me. I already did Barney. Uh, we'll, we'll make one up as we go, all right? You'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Dustin, what? What? Noah, what? The Wiggle theme song. Yes, all right. For the rest of your life, the Wiggle theme song will play as you go anywhere else. Okay. So here we go. Who wants to start? Anyone feeling confident? Micah. My man Micah's going to start. All right, Micah, take your bat. We're going to hit it out this way. All right, so front row, uh, you're in the danger zone. You paid for the full experience. You're going to get it. Here he goes. Ooh, all right. You can scoot forward a little bit. You can scoot forward a little bit if you want. Whoa, that's good. That is good, and that's gone. All right, so that's two. We'll give him like seven. Three. Oh, watch out. All right, so we got one point still. Four. Ah, it's gone. That's out of here. Home run. Two points. Whoa, watch out. Watch your corneas. Watch your retinas. Whoa. All right. Uh, one, I think that's what? Six? Seven. Let's do one more. Whoa. <laughs> that looks dangerous. All right. That's good. You got two. Two home runs. Next up, Peyton. No, my dude. We're going to let her go last. Sorry, Jake. You got a backward hat. You're confident. I'm feeling good. Jake's up, all right. Ooh, had another way. Here we go, seven, one. Whoa, watch out. Didn't quite go over there. Two, wow, oh, no. <laughs> Three, uh, close, I don't know. Four, that's gone, that's it, that's one. Oh, the screen flicker, that's good. Whoa, and then they didn't come back down, that's not perfect. Two for one. We're getting the pitches a little high. One more. Let's do one more. Oh, all right. That's it. That's it. Was that seven? No, seven-ish. I mean, and how, did he have one? Noah, where are you at? Was that one? Two. He had two? I can't see in the dark. All right. Last but not least, Peyton, you're up. <laughs> Follow your heart, whichever way. Oh, sorry. You might want to turn the other way around. Or you can go for You can karate chop. Whatever you follow your heart. Oh, that counts. Home run. 
Oh, all right, we're good. A couple more. Oh! Uh, <laughs> okay. How many we got, Dustin? Five? Two more. We got two more. That's good. That's good. Last one, Peyton. You can win with this one. Oh, all right. I think we have a three-way tie. Is that it? Okay, one more. Let's do one more each. Whoever can hit it the farthest. One each. You're all going to get one more. Whoever can hit it the farthest. Here you go, Dustin. <laughs> Here's Peyton's. Cheer for your people. Whoa, come on. We got to get a better pitcher than that. <laughs> pitcher, come on. We got to retire him. Oh, all right, that's all right, that's all right. Here we go, Micah, one more for you, dude. One more for you. Oh, man. Last but not least, all right, we're going to let Jake go last. Jake, you're up. He's eating the marshmallow. Okay, he's already got the celly down. All right, here we go, Jake. It's gone! Jake is the winner! Jake, Jake. Wow. Jake is feeling it, and I am too. All right. <laughs> Jake, wait, hey, wait, come back up. You got a prize. You got a prize. Jake, wait, wait. Come back up. You got a prize. You got a prize. Uh, does Noah have it? Is it in the back? It's on the table. He's grabbing it. Hey, he's got some, some big league chew for you, some bubble gum. They'll grab it for you, and then you can find a seat. That was <laughs> exciting. I loved that. Okay. Uh, ground zero. Two things I need to tell you. The first is, way to go, Jake. The first is, we have got new merch, all right? There's merch, it's outside on the table. Make sure you go out and grab it. Do not miss our new merch, it's super cool. You can buy it out there every week. So go out to the lobby, find our merch. The second one is, I'm gonna share a couple of ground rules for Ground Zero right now, all right? And these rules, they're just to help make our community a better place, make it so we all have fun when we're here. So here's five things, everyone hold up their hand. Five things, hold up at number five. Five things I want you all to know to make all our experiences better. First, the first one is, it'll pop up on the screen, show respect. Everyone say it. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. There you go, you got to respect. And we just want you to show respect to our spaces, to our volunteers, to our leaders. Second one is, be where you're supposed to be. So if you are supposed to be in here, please don't be wandering in the lobby. If you're supposed to head to small group, please don't be outside. It just helps keep our safe spaces. It makes it so we don't have to worry about where you're at. Number three. Avoid PDA, which means pets, pet dogs allowed. No pet dogs allowed, all right? No, PDA is public displays of affection, and please dress appropriately. We just want to make sure everyone's comfortable here. Uh, if your grandma would be uncomfortable, please don't do it, okay? That's a good rule. Number four, don't be a distraction. So if you're hanging out in the audience, uh, if you're in your small group, if you're having fun in the lobby, please don't distract someone else's experience while they're here, because God wants to speak to each one of you, so please don't make someone else miss that, all right? Uh, and last but not least, join in. You will always get more out of this if you put more in. As much as you put in is how much you'll get out. So when it comes for large group, pay attention. When you are in small group, uh, be vulnerable. Tell people about your life. Get to know them. Uh, and the more you put in, the more you will get out. So join in and have fun. All right? That's all I got for you, Ground Zero. In just a second, a video is going to play. And then my man, Brandon Gilliam, the high school teaching pastor, is going to come out and give the message tonight. So when he does, can you give him a huge round of applause? Can you do that, Ground Zero? Okay, sweet. Check out this video. Ground Zero! What's up, you guys? Hey, can you all just make your best goat noise? Like, right now. Everyone, go right now. Oh, my goodness. That was incredible. I think I heard someone at Blaine make that. Hey, and online, right now, can you, can you put goat in the chat right now? Can you just put it in the chat? 
It's so good to be here with you guys. My name is Brandon Gilliam. I am the high school teaching pastor, which means I normally get to hang out with high schoolers on Wednesday night, but I am so privileged and so honored to be here with all of you across all of our campuses and everyone joining in online tonight. Welcome to Ground Zero. It's the best night of the week. If you were here last week, then you know that we jumped into a brand new teaching series called Lift Off. And this series is about how life with Jesus how life with Jesus lifts us up and how everyone is invited to join. Tonight, I want to talk to you about that last part. Tonight, I want to talk about this, communities that lift. I want to talk about figuring out how we become a community that lifts at ground zero. Now, if you don't know what a community is, a community is a group of people that have something in common, that they're unified around something. It could be a sport. Everyone scream your favorite sport. It could be an interest. Everyone scream your favorite interest. It could be an idea. Everyone scream your favorite idea. Anything like that. It gathers people together and gets them interested in one another. Something that they have in common. But let me tell you something, Ground Zero. Let me tell you something that I really, really believe. Communities that work together, that have each other's back, and that reach for a goal Those are the communities that lift. And the question I want to talk about with you tonight is, what would it look like if we made ground zero, this place, on Wednesday night, a community that lifts? And the reason why I want to talk to you about this is because it's not always easy to do. Because a lot of the time, people will build communities around things that tear people down instead of lift them up. Let me give you an example. A couple weeks ago, listen to this, ground zero. A couple weeks ago, I was at the grocery store searching for some bell peppers. You know I love some bell peppers, all right? I was going to make some fajitas later. And look, they have two kinds of bell peppers. There's the big ones and then there's small ones. I wanted the big ones. Someone said small ones. I wanted the big ones, okay? So I went in this grocery store. They didn't have the big ones. They only had the small ones. So I picked the small ones up and I looked at them. And I said out loud to myself, oh, man. I hate the small bell peppers. I said it to myself. Just a harmless, alone person in a grocery store talking to himself. It should not have been a big deal. But what I didn't know was that there was a couple right next to me. And the guy jumps in to my own conversation and says, tell me about it. But she, pointing to the girl that he was with, only ever gets the big ones. And then she said, I get the big ones because they're cheaper and they taste better. And then the guy looks at me and says, will you tell her that she's wrong and that you're on my side? And I was like, I'm uncomfortable. I didn't know these people. All of a sudden I was in a domestic dispute about a vegetable. I didn't know what to do. And so what I ended up saying was, I don't know. I'm sure you're both right. And then I walked away. It's way easier to build a community around something that tears another person down. It's way easier to get someone on your side making fun of someone else. And my guess is, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You've seen it happen in the comment section on a YouTube where everyone gangs up on the creator. Everyone starts making fun of whoever made the video. You've seen it happen at school where it's easier to make fun of someone else than it is to stick up for someone else who's being put down. Friends, here's what I really believe. In my opinion, communities that are built on fear or anger or confusion aren't worth being a part of. We should be a part of a community that lifts. And as a follower of Jesus, it's the expectation that we build communities that lift. Look at what one of the writers of the Bible named Paul said in the book of Galatians. He said, carry each other's burdens, which is another way of saying, take care of one another. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. And I love this because there's no wiggle room there. That's why Paul called it a law. Either I'm carrying my friend's burdens or I'm not. So tonight, with the short amount of time I have left with you, I want to talk about how we become a community that lifts, not one that tears one another down, but one that lifts one another up as we follow Jesus. I think there's two ways that we can do this. The first way is this, to leave no one behind. When I was in high school, 
I was a part of a youth group. Just like you guys are here tonight, I was a part of something like this. And my church group went to an orphanage in Nicaragua that was in the mountains every year. The only way to get there was by bus, and it took three days to get up the mountain. And we had to go on these side roads, and it was very sketchy. And the only, along the way, we had to stop at gas stations. And if we didn't stop at a gas station, we could run out of gas and be stranded on a mountain. And so we stopped at a gas station. My friend and I had to go to the bathroom. We go in. There was a line, so we wait in line for the bathroom, and we waited for so long that the bus had enough time to fill up on gas and drive away, leaving me and my friend stranded alone on the side of a mountain in Nicaragua. Now, let me explain the difficulties that I was facing here. Number one, back then, teenagers didn't have cell phones because I'm very old, okay? Didn't have, so I had no easy way to contact the bus and say, hello, you forgot something. Me, come back and get me right now, please. And two, we were in Nicaragua where everyone spoke Spanish and I didn't. The only thing I knew how to say in Spanish was donde esta el baño, which was where's the bathroom. And I had already used that. So I couldn't call for help and I couldn't ask for help. All I could do was sit and wait. And let me tell you something. The waiting was the worst part. Because we didn't know if anyone remembered that we were gone. We didn't know if anyone even noticed We didn't know where to start, and so all we could do was sit and wait. But thankfully, we had a friend on the bus who noticed. And he got the bus driver to pull over to the side of the road, and he got everyone off the bus, this whole group of people. And they started walking down the road. And in the distance, I'm not kidding, it was like a movie. The sun was setting, the fog was coming off of the mountain. Me and my friend saw all of our friends walking down the road toward us, and we ran to them in slow motion, I think. And we were like, we're saved. I can still picture what it felt like to have my friends walking toward me when I was left behind. And my guess is that some of you know what it feels like to be overlooked. Some of you know what it feels like to be left out or to be left behind. And it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all. My question for us tonight is, what if this was a place where we didn't let anyone feel that way, where we left no one behind. And not because it makes us look good, but it's because it's what God does. There's a book of the Bible called Deuteronomy, which is a hilarious word, but it's an actual book of the Bible. And in this book, it tells the story of the nation of Israel, God's people who were learning to live life by God's rules. And in Deuteronomy chapter 10, God is laying out his foundational rules. And this dude named Moses steps up. And Moses is like, let me tell you why we should follow God's rules. And he says this, for the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no brides. He's saying the reason we should follow God is because he's better than any other option. His way is better than any other way. But Moses didn't stop there. He went on to say, let me tell you why God is so great. What makes him different than any other way and why we should follow his rules. He said this, because God defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you. These are all people who were left behind in their culture. He gives them food and clothing. And you, you are to love those who are foreigners for you yourself were once foreigners. I tell you that story to tell you this point right here. What makes God so great is he leaves no one behind. He looks out for anyone who's been left out, for anyone who's been left behind. And he calls us to do the same. And you might be asking yourself, how do we do that? What does that look like practically on a Wednesday night? Well, here are a few ideas. First, no one sits alone. What if no one ever sat alone, didn't sit alone in hang time, didn't sit alone during the message or worship? Now, if they want to be left alone, that's totally cool. But like we looked, we made sure that this was a place where everyone felt like they belong. Another another idea is to sacrifice being cool. This means not being too worried about what your friends will think of you if you leave them to go include someone else. Because let me tell you something in the long run, friends, hear me. In the long run, being cool won't matter, but being kind will always be important. Always. Another way to do this is to focus on your small group. Make sure that your small group is a place that's encouraging, 
that's uplifting, that's never, ever, ever shaming. Never shaming. It's a place where you can be yourself and everyone else can too. These are just a few ideas that we can leave no one behind on a Wednesday night. So let's do that. Let's be that kind of community. A community that lifts, never leaves anyone behind. The second way, the second way that we can be a community that lifts is to commit to community. Now, I played some sports in middle school and high school, but I never started. I was never on varsity. And it wasn't because I was a very, like a really bad athlete. It's just because I didn't care all that much. Like, I just didn't love it. I didn't stay extra after practice. I didn't work out really hard. I didn't really apply myself, get in the face of whoever we were playing. I just sort of went through the motions. I remember one game in high school where it was a really close game, and it wasn't supposed to be. We were playing a team that was supposed to be way better than us. But my team showed up that night. I was playing, and I wasn't trying that hard. I was just sort of going through the motions. So my coach called a timeout and he got us in a huddle and he put us together really tight. And he looked right at me and he said, do you want it? What he was asking was, do you want to win with your team? Do you want to reach for something beyond yourself? Do you want to partner with other people to achieve something great? And in that moment, something shook loose in my brain and in my heart. And I was like, yes, that is what I want to do. And we got back onto the court. We were playing basketball and we won the game. But it wasn't because of me. It was because my whole team worked together to achieve something great. And that is a picture of a community that lifts. Everyone working together to achieve something beyond themselves. And look, Christian communities have been built on that kind of commitment from the very beginning. There's another book in the Bible called the Book of Acts. And it tells the story of the very first days of, of the, the church coming together, a group of Christians coming together. And this is what it says. It says that all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily. Those who are being saved. That's our goal. That's what Christian community is supposed to look like. A group of people who work together, who worship together, who learn together, who celebrate together. But the only way that we can make this happen is if we learn to commit to the community that we have here on a Wednesday night. So how do we do that? Here are a couple of ideas. First, Commit to Wednesday nights. Commit to showing up here. You can't build a healthy community if you're not here. And by the way, commitment means that this might come before other things in your life. Commitment is learning to say no to a whole lot of things so that you can say yes to one really great thing. Make Wednesday night that great thing that you're going to say yes to this year. Another way to, to commit to community is to commit to bringing your friends Healthy communities grow. And if, if this is a place that we're committed to, a place that we care about, a place that we're wanting to work together, it should be a place that we invite our friends to. And by the way, this is how we look out for anyone who's been left behind in our friend group, on our teams, in our families, at school. This is when we notice that friend at school that maybe doesn't have a ton of friends. Maybe he's shy or nervous where we notice people at church that are always off in the corner that are just waiting for someone to come down the road of their life looking for them. This is where we invite our friends. And listen, I get it. That's scary to do. It's scary to invite your friends to something that you care about. That's why we pray and we ask God, give us the courage to do it anyway because communities that lift leave no one behind. The last way I think we can commit to community is to commit to your small group. Most of the time, community starts small. It's smart. It starts with you seeing other people and allowing other people to see you. You listening to other people and you allowing other people to listen to you. That starts in your small group. And listen, in just a moment, in just a minute, I'm gonna send you guys off to your small groups. 
And if you don't have a small group yet, if you're not signed up, don't worry. There is a table in the lobby for all of you at all of your campuses where you can go and sign up for one tonight to get plugged in. But when I send you off into your small groups, this is your chance to commit. Your chance to just talk about your day, to be vulnerable, to be kind, encouraging, uplifting, never shaming. Because they are your people and you are theirs. It doesn't mean that you will always agree or always like each other, but it does mean that you're willing and committed to work it out. Friends, ground zero. We have a chance to respond to a world that feels divided, that unites around anger. We can respond to that by showing them a community that lifts. Let's show the world that when we follow Jesus, we create a community that lifts and we do that by leaving no one behind and committing to community. Ground Zero, let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for my friends. Thank you for giving us a chance to create healthy community tonight. I pray that all of us across all of our campuses, everyone joining in online, that we would commit that we would make this an important part of our weekly rhythm, that church on Wednesday nights and ground zero on Wednesday nights would become a part of who we are. We would invite people to it. We'd leave no one out. That We would commit to making this place healthy and good in a place that we want to belong because we have something to add to it. Thank you, God, for giving us each other. Now, Lord, give us the courage to really press into small groups, to be known, to get to know some other people. God, we trust you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Ground Zero, much love. We will see you next week. Go to small group.